sing to the morning star of grace from the shifting shadows of the earth we will lift our eyes to him where steady arms of mercy reach to gather children in rejoice rejoice
Good morning and welcome to Christ the King Sunday. Let us worship God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So today we reflect on the, the reading about the sheep and the goats, thinking about what does that mean, Christ being the King? Does that mean about being King Lord over all? Or perhaps more of a vulnerable King coming alongside us in difficult times? So we come to that time of the service where we offer our prayers of penitence. Since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, looking to Jesus in penitence and faith. And let's just take a short time of silence together as we reflect on those things that we wish to offer to God, knowing that we are forgiven. Lord, you are gracious and compassionate. Lord, have mercy. You are loving to all and your mercy is over all creation. Christ, have mercy. Your faithful servants bless your name and speak of the glory of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. So may the God of all healing and forgiveness draw us to God's self and cleanse us from our sins, that we may behold the glory of God's Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our prayer for today. God the Father, help us to follow the call of Christ the King, to follow in his service, whose kingdom has no end. For he reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, one glory. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Son of Man comes in his glory with all of his angels, he will sit on his royal throne. The people of all nations will be brought before him, and he will separate them, as shepherds separate their sheep from their goats. He will place his sheep on the right on his right hand and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, My father has blessed you. Come and receive the kingdom that was prepared for you before the world was created. When I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. And when I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was a stranger, you welcomed me. 
And when I was naked, you gave me clothes to wear. When I was sick, you took care of me. And when I was in jail, you visited me. Then the ones who please the Lord will ask, when did we give you something to eat or drink? When did we welcome you as a stranger or give you clothes to wear or visit you while you were sick or in jail? The king will answer, whenever you did it for any of my people, no matter how unimportant they seemed, you did it for me. Then the king will say to those on his left, get away from me, you are under God's curse. Go into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. I was hungry, but you did not give me anything to eat. And I was thirsty, but you did not give me anything to drink. I was a stranger, but you did not welcome me. And I was naked, but you did not give me any clothes to wear. I was sick and in jail, but you did not take care of me. Then the people will ask, Lord, when did we fail to help you when you were hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in jail? The king will say to them, whenever you fail to help any of my people, no matter how unimportant they seemed, you failed to do it for me. Then Jesus said, those people will be punished forever, but the ones who please God will have eternal life. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It's a real sadness to me, and I think to many of us, that our country seems to be coming more and more divided, as indeed does the whole world. We had the lead up to Brexit, those supporting it, those who didn't. And sometimes it was really hard to find common ground. I know of several families who fell out about it or just reached the place where they just didn't talk about it for the sake of peace. Then we had the Black Lives Matter campaign. Some people thinking it was a movement about justice, others thinking it was just people out for a fight. And in recent weeks, we've seen the real splits in America over the presidential campaign and all of those willing to come out and fight the group that they don't agree with. Now we're in the second wave of the pandemic and the North seems to be divided from the South in our country. Again, another division perhaps is coming in Scotland. People are beginning to accuse each other of spreading the disease by not following the rules. I feel sometimes that we're living in the story of sheep and goats in real time. We are seeing ourselves as different groups, different tribes, and judging each other accordingly. Except that in Jesus' time in the Middle East, the sheep and goats tended to graze together they were quite hard to tell apart because they were of similar colour, a similar size, and they were only separated at the end of the day because when night draws in and it gets cold, the goats don't have the thick wool of the sheep, and so they're less hardy and they need to be taken in for shelter at night. So this can raise questions about the way that this passage has been seen in times gone by, how we've seen it as judging those who are good against those who are deemed to be bad. Maybe even asking ourselves, well, who am I? Am I sheep or am I a goat? Am I good or am I bad? Do I help others enough? And then perhaps seeing other people and judging them according to those criteria. Are they good or bad? How much do they help other people? Are they proper Christians? Whereas really, this is a picture of sheep and goats living together, the different tribes sharing the same pasture. And I think that's a really helpful image to help us to see society in a different way. 
And the reality, of course, is that all of us will sometimes be a sheep. We will sometimes be a goat, depending on a certain situation, and what buttons are pressed for us, what do we find easy to do, what we find difficult to do, what is a cost to us, and what's something that just comes to us naturally. So if you think about that scene with the sheep and the goat sharing the same pasture, as representing our lives as they are now, then perhaps we can also imagine Jesus being present too. The resurrected Jesus living among us, so in, re in the reality of the divisions that we see splitting our society and our community, we can hold on to the fact that Jesus actually is there, constantly reminding us of God's love for all of us reminding us that whether we are a sheep or a goat, we are still loved by God, that we are never left alone, never forgotten, and however lost we feel, Jesus will always seek us out. Today we celebrate Christ the King. It's a title that Jesus himself rejected when he was alive, but one that the Church has conferred on him in later times. And I personally find it helpful to think of Christ the King, not as the King who has power over us, but instead who chooses to share that power with us, coming alongside us in love, giving us courage that because we are loved for who we are by God, so we too can love others, helping us to let go of those things that make us tribal, those things that make us angry with others, those things that can cause division between neighbours and families, helping us to love each other as we are. At the moment, the school children are painting stars. It's an idea that's grown out of St Andrew's community group, which is called Tower Hill Together. And it's one of those ideas that really is about trying to bring people together when we've lived so through such difficult times, difficult decisions, difficult illnesses, death, and all the fear that we're living within, those divisions and fear that has caused us sometimes to not work together as we could. And so with the Christmas star, we're encouraging people to put a picture up in their window, drawing a star and writing a message of hope and peace and love, reaching out to each one of us in our communities. A bit like the rainbow at the beginning of the pandemic that I think really helped to bring a sign of hope in our community. So I pray too that the Christmas star will actually reach out and help us to see God's love in the incarnation this Christmas. It's something that will be publicised on Facebook and across Kirby. And please just join in, draw whatever, how big or however, however small your star might be, and just hang it in your window from December the 1st. And just show that love and caring across our community of Kirby. In the end time, we believe that all things will be made one in Christ. But until that time, Christ the Servant King reminds us that love and serving can help to unify us, to help to bring together those animals on the pasture, to work together in unity. And perhaps the Christmas star will be a helpful sign of all of that, all of us, this Christmas. Amen.
So we come to our time of prayer. United in the company of all the faithful and looking for the coming of the kingdom, let us offer our prayers to God, the source of all life and holiness. Merciful Lord, strengthen all Christian people by your Holy Spirit, that we may live as a royal priesthood and a holy nation to the praise of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all ministers and people of your church, that by faithful proclamation of your word, we may be built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets into a holy temple in the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Empower us by the gift of your holy and life-giving spirit, that we may be transformed into the likeness of Christ, from glory to glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give to the world and its peoples the peace that comes from above, that they may find Christ's way of freedom and life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hold in your embrace all who witness to your love in the service of the poor and needy, all who minister to the sick and dying, and all who bring light to those in darkness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Touch and heal all those whose lives are scarred by sin or disfigured by pain, that raised from death to life in Christ, their sorrow may be turned to eternal joy. And we take a short time of silence to remember those in our hearts and minds in need of your healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember in your mercy all those who have gone before us, who have been well pleasing to you from eternity, preserving in your faith your servants on earth. Guide us to your kingdom and grant us your peace at all times. And again, we take a time of silence to remembering to remember those who have recently died. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hasten the day when many will come from east and west, from north and south, and sit at the table in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the whole company of your saints in glory, with whom in fellowship we join our prayers and praises. By your grace, May we, like them, be made perfect in your love. Blessing and honour and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honour and power, be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. We saints and martyrs through the ages, as our Saviour taught us so, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Forgive us, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May God who kindled the fire of his love in the hearts of the saints pour upon us the riches of his grace. May he give us joy in their fellowship and a share in their praises. Amen. May God strengthen us to follow them in the way of holiness and to come to the full radiance of glory. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.